Now, it's not very mind-boggling the fact that you hear people on the internet who don't sound too bright at all, but the fact that sound itself can be bright is a weird science fact that boggles my mind. Now, obviously, we've got hearing and sight because there's a difference between sound and light, so it sounds pretty crazy that sound itself can be bright. Kind of. There's a phenomenon where if you hit water with some waves, you can get light. Not those waves, sound waves. The phenomenon is called sonoluminescence. Sono means sound and, and luminescence means light. Scientists are not the most creative people in the world when it comes to to naming stuff. Now, if you own a boat, you're probably familiar with cavitation. It's where turbulence causes air pockets to form in the water around things like a propeller, and it can wreak havoc. And all cavitation is, is anytime water is forcefully ripped apart by something like a propeller or a sound wave, it creates a pocket of air. And you might be thinking, hold up, if it's already underwater and it rips the water apart, it should just be creating a vacuum, right? Where is it getting the air from? And you're right, it should just be creating a vacuum, but it doesn't because water is weird. See, water is oxygen that's why fish can breathe in it and when cavitation happens and it's ripped apart like that that vacuum that it creates pulls that oxygen and nitrogen and other atmospheric gases out of the water into that bubble so that's pretty cool it's not actually a vacuum but even though it's not a vacuum it's still pretty low pressure compared to all of the water around it so it should just float to the surface like a regular bubble right wrong see a regular air bubble already starts off as a gas that's in gas form displacing so much water but a cavitation bubble was forced to expand from an already condensed liquid state. So it's currently being forced to take up more space than it naturally was, and it doesn't want to do that. So it already wants to contract back into the form that it was just forced to not be in anymore. So it does that, and that process is helped along by the much higher pressure of the water around it. And the cavitation bubbles literally just implode in on themselves. Okay, cool, but what the hell does that have to do with light? It turns out when the cavitation bubble implodes like that, it flashes us like it's Matt Gates at a middle school. Yep, it just releases a flash of light. Now it happens really super fast fast, like 100 picoseconds, which I didn't realize that Pokemon is now a unit of, of measurement. And when it does it, it also gets hotter than Khaleesi coming out of a bonfire. For that fraction of a second, it's hotter than the surface of the sun. Now, like lots of things in science, scientists discovered this by accident when they're trying to use a sonogram to develop film. And on the film they developed, there was a bunch of little flashes of light because of the, the sonoluminescent. Turns out you can create a sustained little flickering light, they call it a star in a jar, by bombarding water with sound waves. You can actually buy the equipment to do it yourself at home, which would honestly be a pretty cool home science project. But what makes this even more interesting is that this happens in nature, and you may have heard about it in one of my previous videos if you followed me for a while, in the video I did about the pistol shrimp. The pistol shrimp and the mantis shrimp are able to snap their claws so fast that they create the same phenomenon, and the pistol shrimp uses this phenomenon to shoot plasma balls out of its pinchers at its prey. But why does it happen? Why does a collapsing cavitation bubble release a burst of light? And the answer is a surprising... Meh. It turns out that this is actually a pretty hard thing to study. Now we know it gets really hot because of compression. The harder you squeeze, the hotter things get. I'm sure y'all can relate to that. But that heat could potentially be increased by the fact that that vapor is quickly condensing back into a liquid, releasing lots of latent heat. But what's making the light? It could be inert gases like argon just glowing from all of that heat. Or it could be from the heat tearing water apart into hydroxide and hydrogen ions, which then burns back into water. And that hydrogen fire creates a flash. It could be something yet they don't understand stand altogether. But sometimes the mystery is what makes phenomenons like this even more exciting. And the fact that with the right clap you can cause some cavitation that creates considerable Calvin and causes a curious coruscation, well that is pretty mind-boggling.